Let me start by just uh, giving you a sort of an analysis of the growth story in the Australian economy. Here we're looking at the contribution of the various of the four various sectors to GDP growth. Uh, so we've got the consumer and housing, we've got business, we've got the government, and we've got net exports. A few points I want to make. Uh, this year we expect GDP growth to be 2.3% for Australia. That'll be the fourth consecutive year. Uh, this, I mean in 2011, will be the fourth consecutive year where, we, where we've grown well below trend. We expect in 2012 about 3%. Uh, and a little more than that in 2013. So really, uh, we congratulate ourselves about our wonderful performance, but that'll be six years in a row when the economy's been growing below trend. So why is this the case? Well, the first case is that if we look at the consumer and housing sector, their, their contribution to GDP growth has been much lower than normal, uh, less than 2%. They represent about 70% of the economy but we've been getting way below trend contribution from growth in G uh, uh, to GDP from the consumer and the housing sector for some years now, uh, and we expect that to continue in 12 and in 13. Of course, we've got spectacular contribution to growth from business investment, totally dominated by mining, and we c certainly expect that to continue. The government did a, played an important role in bolstering growth in 2010, uh, with the stimulus program, but since then the government's role has been very modest. And of course, the one that does surprise us all is that uh, with this mining boom, net exports are still very major drags on growth in the economy. And that's because about 40% of the money that's spent on the mining boom is imported. Uh, it's because other sectors such as manufacturing, tourism, uh, are doing it very, very tough under the high Aussie dollar. Uh, and even agriculture that's been doing very, very well in volume terms is being affected by the price effect from the, uh, from the high currency. So we've got four years in a row where net exports have been a substantial drag on GDP and we certainly uh, continue to expect that to happen. Uh, in terms of looking at the domestic economy, uh, business and consumer confidence, not very, not very exciting at the moment. Uh, the consumer confidence is reflecting this weakness in the household sector that I referred to. And while business confidence in some sectors, such as mining, is very strong, overall business confidence is also un uninspiring at this stage of the cycle. Uh, of course, the housing sector represents a considerable drag on the economy at the moment. If we look at the, uh, the dwelling approvals for Australia, they are running well below underlying demand. That's the black line, and have been doing so for about 10 years. And if we look at the shaded area, that's the, under, that's the, 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 the shortage of housing in this country. It's now representing about two years of production, uh, high interest rates, difficulties in getting, uh, in getting land development approvals, many factors that our friends at the Housing Industry Association will tell us about are factors behind this, but housing prospects continue to, per to represent little good news in terms of the growth outlook. Of course, the mining story is a spectacular story for Australia. The latest capital expenditure survey that was released last week uh, emphasised that if we look at 2012, the miners are expected to raise their investment by more than 80% in 2012 and about 60% in 2013. These are just breathtaking numbers. However, when we look at manufacturing and services, the story is very different. Manufacturers looking to contract their investment in 13 and only a very, very minuscule improvement in investment from the services sector. Uh, in terms of the numbers for the mining sector, uh, uh, between 2003 and 2008, uh, mining investment per year increased by, by about, from about four billion to eight billion. Uh, and in the, la in the next, in the, um, from 2010, it's gone from 10 billion to 20 billion. We hear about projects out there equal to about another 150 billion. So there's absolutely no doubt that the mining boom will continue. Uh, it will continue despite what I expect to be uh, some disturbing cyclical developments in China, which we'll discuss in a moment. Uh, if we look at other challenges facing the Australian economy, however, uh, look at the debt build-up in the Australian economy in the last 10 years and compare that with the US. In the case of the US, the household sector debt rose by about 20 percentage points, from about 75 percent of GDP to 95. The US problem, of course, was in the government sector, where their debt-to-GDP ratio rose by 40 percentage points. 
For Australia, household and corporate debt has been very well behaved, and, sorry, government and corporate debt very well behaved, but we've had this uh, spectacular rise in household debt. And if we compare Australia's household debt to, uh, to GDP ratio, the black bar there, we see we're world class. I think Canada is now somewhat higher than us, but uh, we do have a, an excessive amount of household debt. Now, that's not such a bad thing if the asset that's supporting the debt is performing well. But when the asset that's supporting the debt, uh, which is uh, house prices, are falling, that's very unnerving for the Australian household sector. My view is that we need lower interest rates to try and arrest this trend. Uh, I expect, however, that even with lower interest rates, the outlook for the housing market is going to be fairly flat. Uh, in real terms for a number of years to come, which will maintain a degree of caution in that household sector. Uh, and of course what we're seeing is that the household savings rate continues to climb. Uh, our own work on our own balance sheet suggests that things like people moving away from credit card usage to debit card usage is suggesting that that rise in that savings rate is not finished yet. So with the household sector concerned about the value of their properties, having higher levels of debt, we can't really expect to see a return to a, a, a much, much less cautious uh, household in the future. However, at the heart of the outlook now really sits the labour market. Uh, it's pretty clear that the Reserve Bank was uh, ecstatic about the fact that the unemployment rate fell last month uh, to 5.1%. And it's quite an extraordinary performance from the unemployment rate. When we think about where the jobs are in this country, uh, retail and wholesale sector, nearly 15% of the jobs are there, 7% uh, in hospitality, about 9% in manufacturing, 10% in construction, 7% in finance, and only a few percent in mining and utilities. When we think about these big forces that are operating on this economy at the moment, the very high exchange rate, and unfortunately, coincidentally, the highly cautious consumer, you can see that retail is going to face sub substantial headwinds, hospitality through the, uh, through the tourism sector also facing substantial headwinds, manufacturing, we know that story very clearly, uh, construction being affected by the cautious consumer, the high interest rates, uh, and of course finance when we see that credit growth has slowed from 10 to 15 per cent to a couple of percent, finance is also under these stresses. Mining and those sectors that are servicing mining are doing their job. We've seen a, uh, we saw 60,000 new jobs in mining in 2010, another 20, 30,000 in 2011. But we've also seen some very disturbing trends in other sectors where we're starting to see an acceleration of job loss in retail, an acceleration of job loss in manufacturing, construction, in the real estate sector, uh, and also in the hospitality sector. And I don't think this story is over yet. I think that uh, despite the fact that um, uh, we last year was the weakest year for jobs growth that we'd seen since 1991, uh, uh, statistically, we didn't get much of an increase in the unemployment rate. I think it went from 4.8 up, up, 4 up to 5.3 at one, one point, uh, now settled back at 5.1. But that circle represents a zero. So if we look at the number of jobs that were added to the economy, and look back over history, we haven't seen a zero, a weaker, a weaker number since 1992. So the rationale of these headwinds that are affecting the economy and working their way through the labour market is certainly playing out at this stage. So why did the unemployment rate not rise by more? Well, the main reason was that we had a collapse in the, in the growth in the workforce. We had a substantial slowdown in population growth uh, and we had falls in the participation rate in both male and female sectors that are really only you normally associate with a recession. My view is that those participation rates are going to start turning around and the population growth is already starting to pick up and the number of jobs that will be needed to absorb a substantial pickup in the growth in the workforce just won't be there. So we're likely to see a substantial rise in the unemployment rate this year. I would expect to around about that 5.75, 5.8% going through the, course, uh, through the course of this year. That should be putting some pressure on, on interest rates, particularly given that inflation looks to be un well and truly under control. Black line there is non-tradable inflation, red line tradable inflation. Uh, inflation now running in that two, around about 2.5%, uh, and we expect that to remain. 
the Reserve Bank is concerned about the fact that tradable and non-tradable inflation hasn't come down. Uh, but I think in the case of the non-tradable sector, given that so, ma so much of that sector is under the stress that we've been seeing, we're starting to see substantial po productivity improvements in those sectors. And I think the productivity growth will improve. Uh, that's going to take uh, pressure off trade non-tradable inflation, and I think the inflation story will remain rather benign. Of course, tradable inflation is, 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 uh, continues to help significantly to hold down the inflation rate. 